The results of the hurricane was devastation. Um, I, I think that sums it up in one word in terms of what totally happened at the airport terminal and uh, the island on a hold. Um, for the terminal building, we had about 80% of the uh, terminal building roof was uh, destroyed and all the um, adjacent facilities uh, also suffered severe damages as well. And um, we basically didn't have a facility to, to operate from. And with that, we had to come up with uh, ideas on how to basically get the airport back up and running um, right after the, the hurricane. Prior to us opening on October 10th, uh, 2017, uh, we had the relief flights and also those um, flights that was taking people off the island. So the facility was actually swamped with military uh, team right after. So the, we had to wait quite a while before we even had the facility back in our hands to operate from. And from there, once we received it, I believe we had about a week and a half to get the facility up and running. And when I say the facility, I mean the entire uh, perimeter as well, because we had about 90% of the uh, fencing um, um, around the perimeter that was destroyed as well. And luckily, as people would think, uh, the part that stayed up from the fence was the part that uh, the um, trail seekers would hang on to, you know, when planes are, are departing. So we had all of this work to do, um, and given all of the devastation, like I said, happened throughout the island, people had their own personal stuff to, to deal with as well. The staff still came out and assisted with cleaning up um, the facility, um, as well as we had to hire several local contractors to assist in the cleaning up and to make it possible to open up by um, October 10th of the very same year. Now, like I said, 80% of your building roof gone, so that means constant water seeping in not only from Hurricane Irma, but also Hurricane Jose, as well as um, um, Hurricane Maria. Now, with that, we had to come up with an idea of how we're going to um, basically accommodate passengers arriving and departing. Actually, the arrival hall was basically um, uh, catered through the existing FBO building. So all arrivals, whether it's uh, F, uh, private jets, commercial, had to go through that, that facility. And all departures happen under a big tent. Um, along with the baggage makeup area that we used. Now, we used that area for about a few months um, and given the um, restoration that we see what happening in terms of demand keep coming back, uh, a number of hotels keep coming back online, we had to quickly migrate into another plan and another plan was into moving into a pavilion. Uh, we had two large pavilions, one was for the um, arrival process and one was for the departure process as well. Very simple tents, uh, but we took away the word tent and called them pavilion, you know, not to create that, that, that stigma in people's mind right after the hurricane. So it was, both were fully air conditioned. Um, they had all the amenities that was needed in the facilities. You had concessionaires, you had restrooms, you had uh, security, uh, CCTV, you had um, even ATM machines and char uh, telephone charging stations as well in, in, in these facilities. Now, that was basically uh, um, to accommodate the growth of the passengers that we um, saw uh, for the coming months. And then I think about six months right after, we had to um, also look at another plan, given again the development that is happening on the island with the hotel, more hotel rooms coming back online and with actually um, the demand in, in people moving to, through um, um, St. Martin as well. Because remember, St. Martin is a hub airport and as a hub, we cater for Anguilla, St. Bart's, and a number of other islands uh, surrounding St. Martin. So with that growth, we had to actually move now 
into another facility and in discussion with our team, uh, we came up with the move of back into the terminal building, which is referred to as a package one. Um, we established a project team, an internal project team, who um, drew all the plans and came up with all the ideas, and we moved back um, in December of that very same year. So within a space of, a, of, of let's say, six to eight months, we were constantly moving, you know, um, based on the growth that we saw happening um, in the island. Now with that, we, we are still in package one right now, which is about 30% of the uh, terminal building. And just to add, you know, we couldn't have made that move unless the roof was actually completed as well. The move into the building kind of synchronized at a time with our anniversary year. We had made 75 years of existence of service to the community as well as our neighboring islands um, in, in aviation. So that move on that particular, in that particular year was, was, was symbolic um, for us um, as well in getting the airport back up and running. Now the airport terminal reconstruction project, how does the operation play a role into this? So in the future, the airport of the future, um, where will you play a, a major hand in the operations? <laughs> if you're looking at the planning with the project team that we have today, where, where did you, you play a role in making sure that that enhancement comes to play for 2023 when we reopen? The operational part of it is that we are charged with how people move from point A to point B. And with that we mean from the point of check-in or arrival at the airport, check-in, uh, security, immigration, uh, while they visit our concessionaires, as well as ending up to the gate and boarding the flight. So we have to make sure that um, you know, we, do not we do not lose um, in terms of, of, of advancement that has happened in the past few years. But coming back online is that we are basically having the latest technology as well installed in the facility. And with that, our operation team plays a vital role in making sure that um, the project team understands um, the business in terms of the latest developments and how people and what people are looking for in terms of um, easement of travel to make sure it's, it's, it's not only seamless, efficient, but also a wonderful experience as well. Thanks, uh, Audrey. 2020 was quite an uh, eventful year uh, if you look back. It was the year, of course, when we uh, had Corona and despite the very difficult uh, circumstances we were working in uh, 2020, we made quite uh, a lot of key steps forward in the reconstruction of the uh, airport. First of all, of course, we managed to finalize the whole funding, which was a lot of hard work together with the St. Martin government, the World Bank and the European Investment Bank and the bondholders to finalize the whole package. And we managed to finalize that in, uh, in April. And that was a major enabler for us to move forward in uh, 2020. Because with the funding in, uh, in place, it could take all the next steps to start rebuilding and reconstructing the, uh, the airport. And the first thing, of course, was finalizing the design uh, and start contracting out uh, all the work which is needed for the uh, reconstruction. And the first milestone for us was doing all the contracting for the pre-works which needed to be done to rebuild uh, the terminal to its former uh, glory. And the pre-works basically involved uh, a couple of key uh, packages. One of the smaller packages was the sprinkler installation, which is the whole fire protection of the, uh, the airport. But at the terminal specifically. Uh, but the other major package was the whole uh, remediation and demolishment of the terminal to make it ready for the real reconstruction work of the uh, airport. Now, all that work has been completed uh, in the meantime, uh, and the terminal look actually spick and span. You won't believe it. If you would uh, walk into the airports, I ask almost people to take their shoes off, so clean it is. Uh, but the other milestone, of course, is we start contracting out for the general contractor package. 
that has been tendered. We cut the bits in. We're very pleased uh, to have a number of competitive bits in, and those bits are currently being evaluated. When will we, we learn of who will be the, the general contractor for the rebuilding of the airport terminal? The, the bits are currently being uh, evaluated, and we hope in uh, the month of July to be able to award uh, the contract uh, to the winning uh, bidder. So the number of steps to be taken between now and then. So there will be an uh, uh, initial uh, announcement of an award, there will be a standstill period, and there will be the finalization of the contract documents. Yeah, so the project is funded uh, by uh, a, a package uh, uh, funded, uh, one part basically from the trust fund, which is via the St. Martin government provided to us, and that's uh, uh, one part of the funding, and the other part of the funding for the reconstruction comes from the European Investment uh, Bank. It's a combined funding uh, package. They're like two children, like twins, uh, you could uh, say it. And that in total enables us to do the reconstruction of the, uh, the airport. And the total package of funding we got from uh, the World Bank and the European Investment Bank for the reconstruction uh, itself is about 101 million. On top of that, we got a facility to help us for through this difficult period, which is what we call the liquidity facility. But the main package uh, is really the, the 101 we got from the World Bank and the European Investment Bank to enable to do the, uh, the funding. And that's uh, ultimately, it's a loan provided uh, from us from the St. Martin government to the airport. Can you tell us about the insurance proceeds? Um, does that lend also to the, the funding? Yeah, thanks for asking that, uh, Audrey. Uh, if you look uh, at the whole reconstruction of the, uh, of the airport, the major part we just explained, uh, what comes from uh, the St. Martin government and the World Bank and the European Investment Bank and the Trust Fund, there's a portion which you have to pay ourselves. Yeah, when uh, we got insurance proceeds for the damage at the airport, and those insurance proceeds are used for a couple of things. First of all, we use the insurance proceeds for all the work we've done so far. Yeah, and that is the, uh, what we call the phase one of the uh, reconstruction project. And phase one involves the roof, all the temporary facilities, basically the airport as we operate it uh, now. Yeah, so that portion of the insurance funding enabled us to continue operating and operating at this moment. Okay. So that's one part. Okay. The second part is all the pre-works for the reconstruction is funded by uh, the airport itself. That's all the remediation work, all the design work, uh, the sprinkler system, the insurance of the, uh, the project, all the pre-works is funded by the uh, airport itself. The third component is that we as an airport have to contribute to the uh, reconstruction itself. So a portion of the reconstruction cost is paid out of the insurance proceeds. Yeah? And the fourth element of the insurance proceeds is basically what we call uh, for business interruption, the fact we are now in a corona crisis a smaller portion of the insurance proceeds is being used yeah, to uh, help us through this difficult period during Corona, whereby our cash expenditures are at the moment still higher than our revenues. Yeah, because we have a drop of revenue, you do uh, understand the lower passenger numbers we face.